welcome to the Storm Through Anything podcast. We're your hosts, Jessica and Riley. Today we are talking top dog names for 2022. Uh, we have 10 dog names that we're talking about. We're going to, going to be going from uh, dog number 10 to dog number one. A few things to, to talk about. Anything you want to touch on before we start? So how this list is compiled, and I think it's pretty interesting. So because every single canine storm vest is custom fit to your specific dog, something cool is that we get to see all the dog's names throughout the year of who's getting custom fit vests. So at the end of the year, we have this gigantic list of dog's names compiled um, that you can see what the dog's names are. We get a ton of different, very unique, very cool ones, which we very rarely see. And then we also tend to get a couple of the more popular ones. And it comes through a variety of different things. A lot of it is, is it, uh, dictated through pop culture, we tend to find, as well as sometimes there's random ones on there that we have no idea why they're on there. And there's also a couple kind of mainstays that are, seem to always be on this list every single year. So it's really fun for us to do this. This is totally uh, a podcast that's just built on fun and pop culture and having a chance to talk uh, about some of the the different amazing dogs that we deal with throughout the year. So we're really pumped to be able to share this with everybody. Okay, so we're going to start at dog number 10, which is canine Bowie. Bowie's a fun one. I love talking about this dog because he has been highlighted throughout the entire year for many different reasons. Um, there were a few Bowies. I don't know if it has anything to do with David Bowie, um, possibly his number one, one of his number one songs is under pressure uh don't know if a lot of officers are under pressure so <laughs> so they decided to name their dogs bowie or maybe they just love um i don't know maybe it has something to do with it maybe it doesn't uh but Rai, you took um quite a bit of time this year writing about uh one of the saves this year which was for bowie um maybe talk a little bit about that a couple months ago we got a call from uh, an officer out in Madison, Wisconsin, Officer Dish, uh, and his dish, 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 dish. That's what we we were we were joking, me and Jess, when uh, uh, every time we saw the name, it was we always said dish, dish, dish. dish, dish. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Officer Dish, such an awesome handler. This guy is an absolute professional. We had a chance to speak with him over uh, many different occasions. Uh, one of which was when Bowie was actually saved. Uh, we had an opportunity to speak with him and to get kind of the whole scenario. So when dogs are saved, something that I love to do, and I know Jess does as well, is have a chance to talk with the handler and see, okay, what actually happened? And the reason for this is because it's important for us to know how the vests are reacting to the different scenarios that they're put in. So if a dog is stabbed, it's important to know, okay, well, where was he stabbed? How did the angle of attack go? What happened to the vest after this happened? And that's likewise with, with gunshots. Uh, but it's, it's especially important when it comes to environmental uh, kind of saves. So Bowie was in a situation where he was uh, basically doing a, a track in a super wooded area, basically like like uh, kind of like a farmer's field almost. I so think it was a soybean field. Soybean actually, field, yeah. exactly. And it was really interesting to to hear Officer Dish explain everything in detail to us about how this uh, the suspects fled, how Bowie went and was able to successfully apprehend them. Uh, they were armed. They had gone a whole bunch of car crashes before this all happened. And Bowie was actually saved due to the underbelly impalement protection on his patrol SWAT vest. Which is offered on all our vests now. Every single vest has it. This is the one of the best things. And we, we stress this um, all the time when we talk to handlers is your dog is very close to the ground. Their most likely place to get hit is honestly the underbelly when it comes to this. So that's probably the most important part or one of the most important components to their safety is having their chest p protected. Uh, so he ran through basically kind of like a cow fence is how they would describe it. He slammed right against a piece of barbed wire. Yes. And it hit him right in the chest. You can see the X where it hit It marked the spot, him. literally. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's so obvious where it hit him. Uh, Bowie was completely unscathed. The vest itself was completely fine. It didn't even scratch through the... Uh, the vest, which is awesome, and that's what we what we like to see. Uh, but yeah, this this dog was is phenomenal. And when, whenever we think of Bowie, this is kind of the the thought that comes to my mind. Everyone can can read the save in full on our website on the blog, the Canine Storm uh, Canine Storm blog. We have a full uh, full write up of that. It's really interesting. If you haven't had a chance to see it, definitely take a look. We'll put the link at the top, so you can just click it up and go straight to it. 
Moving on to the next dog. The next dog name that we have at number nine is Canine Goose. Goose. Do you think this has anything to do with Top Gun? Do I think it has anything <laughs> to do with Top Gun? Uh, absolutely. I would be shocked if it didn't have something to do with Top Gun. Uh, we all had the opportunity on, I believe it was Father's Day, uh, to go see the new Top Gun in theaters, which was an absolute blast. Like Jim is a huge fan of a, of a variety of different movies. Top Gun is one of his favorites. He'll say all the quotes during work, uh, all Even the different Even ones things. that you don't think deserves a quote. It's like all the random things that happen where you don't even think it's part of the movie, he they're not, knows they're not, it. They're not quote worthy, but he'll, <laughs> he'll, quote he'll, worthy. he'll say them and he'll, be, and he'll say, He'll look at you like, Top Gun? <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to guess which movie he's trying to quote. But uh, what's also really cool about that movie, it was amazing. We both enjoyed it. We love the classic Top Gun. We love like the original. Uh, something that I loved, loved, loved about this movie was that um, the Navy, like, tr- like real Navy pilots were the the people in charge of doing all the tricks and twists and spins like none of it is uh cgi is that what it's yeah called? it's none of, none of it is cgi yeah. none, of, none of it is fake it's all real i just hope something that i want to take away from this is i hope that those navy pilots got paid even a percentage of what tom cruise <laughs> got for this movie because they were the reason why this movie was incredible yeah it was phenomenal i mean there were so many parts in it that uh we really enjoyed of course seeing the 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 fighter pilots uh, do their thing in the movie was just just amazing. But I also really like the dialogue between the, the different characters. I thought it, some of the scenes, like uh, the bar scene uh, when they're all playing pool and they kind of meet each other for this, for the first time. I don't know how many places we've been to where guys you know kind of talk junk to each other. They're ch- talking smack about each other's capabilities and stuff like that. So I I thought it rang pretty true to the crowd that it was trying to get through to. But it, it, in total, it was really a great movie. It was lots of fun. I, I don't, would um, uh, I hope that many people have had a chance to see it because it was really good. I agree. And something I was going to say about that as well, like we're talking about the, the name Goose right now. Goose obviously was not in the second Top Gun. Spoiler alert, Goose <laughs> dies in the first oh Top Gun. Oh my God. <laughs> Goose dies in the first Top Gun. But uh, his son is one of the main characters of this movie. So uh, I think it's like the actor Miles Teller, I think is getting a little bit of fame and popularity from that movie because of his like he'd really trained for it and is really strong in that movie um i think a little bit of popularity from that uh, as well so perhaps that is why goose was brought back in even though the movie was originally made like almost 30 years ago i think that's probably why he's so popular for sure the next name um is name number eight and surprisingly right at the, right next to each other it's the name maverick that was so, my guess for the top 10 dog names. It was. Yeah. We've really felt like we saw a lot of Maverick this year. And again, it's from Top Gun. Um, just a fun fact. Apparently, Maverick was the number one costume for kids this year um, in North America. So it's pretty funny because our nephew dressed up as um, Maverick this year, our nephew Izzy. And I think he looked like the split image of Tom Cruise uh, with his costume on. So we'll show that right now. Uh, you guys can uh, see for yourself. Please mention in the comments below uh, how much you think that they look similar. I think like literally it's 100%. The jeans, the white shirt, the glasses, doesn't get much better than the that. The plane. The plane, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the jet. Yeah, it's pretty. it was a pretty uh, cute costume for sure. I and think I so think too. it was spot on. He looked awesome in it. Maverick and Goose, totally makes sense. Name number seven, we have Karma. So karma is the sum of a person's actions in this existence decides their fate in their future existence. And you are a huge Swifty. Like you love Taylor Swift. Oh, no. <laughs> you love Taylor Swift. She just came out with a brand new album, which you know, because I've been hearing you sing her latest song, Karma, in the shower. Don't check out my Spotify rap, apparently. Every second day you've been singing the, the song, you know the lyrics, karma is my boyfriend, karma is... A god, sing with me. Probably. Is that one popular right now? I think it is popular. I just know, like, hey, hi, I'm the problem. It's me. That's <laughs> <laughs> that's the only one I can. That one's also popular. And it's a hear, banger. Come on, that is a great song. So, um, definitely, she she's making a big comeback this year with her album. I don't think this is one of the reasons why Karma made it on our top ten list, though. Probably not. But I think it's a fun name. Uh, when somebody gets what's what they have coming to them. 
Carmen truly is a, mm. and it's, 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 you love to see it. You love to see it. You rob a bank. Come on. This is what you get. I agree with that too. I think it's such a fitting name for a working dog. I love that. Um, he is the fate of the people who, whose actions are naughty. So I think Karma is a fantastic name for a dog. I love that it's sitting at number seven. And I hope there's more Karma dogs uh, for next year too. Name number six is Ghost. Do you want to touch on that? I know you are big. You've been reading a lot lately. Not as many um, women's romance novels as usual. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, I'm a, a lot. I'm a Swifty and I love women's lit. It's you love a, women's lit. That is actually a fact. The Swifty part isn't, but women's lit, you're a big fan of. And uh, Ghost is one of the characters in a book that you're reading right now. Maybe uh, touch a little bit about that's that. That's true. So one of uh, the guests in our factory was Ghost. That was a, a common guest from the uh, the different um, plays as we walked around kind of doing the top 10 names teaser. And one of the reasons that one of our uh, our co-workers had given was that they're big Game of Thrones fans. Now, for me, I'll be honest, when Game of Thrones came out, I was one of those guys that was like, oh, I'm not watching Game of Thrones. It's too hyped up. Everyone's loving this thing. And I'm I never- I'm never getting on that bandwagon. Yeah, I'm never getting on the bandwagon. The show's stupid, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, years have gone by. I think it came out in, well, the book came out in the 90s, actually. I think it came out in 1998. Uh, the movie, the the TV shows became popular in 2011. So anyways, one of the main characters in the story, his name is Jon Snow, and he has uh, basically a companion. They're called dire wolves, but they're basically just massive wolves. And his wolf's name is Ghost. And so I think it's pretty fitting. House of the Dragon is a new show that's out right now. At, it revolves around the Game of Thrones series. So again, it's kind of come back in popularity. Uh, I think a lot of people are fans of those shows and those books uh, and maybe the Game of Thrones kind of universe. So it makes sense that you would see that on there as well as we've seen a lot of things where people kind of ironically, when a dog is all black, they'll name the dog ghost. I like that too. So it's, it's funny. Yeah. But the interesting part, part about that is when the canines are working, they're working primarily in the dark, which is why they become a ghost because they're in the blacked out room. The dog is completely black. You can't really see them. So I love that name. I think it's a great name. It's a great choice for, for that. And I can see why it's, it was popular this year for sure. Do you also like our top dog name, which is number five right now? In fifth place is Axel. Axel, the definition of Axel is father of peace. Do you find that fitting for a dog's name? So Axel is always popular too. We kind of uh, last year too. I think we had last Axel year Axel. Yeah. Every single year, there's always mm -hmm. there's always plenty of dogs named Axel. To me, I always think of you know cars and <laughs> chucks uh, initially when I hear that name. The definition of him being the bringer of peace. I think you said father of peace. Yep, the father of peace. Um, it's true for sure, and I guess it just depends how you find that peace when they when the dog arrives. In the fourth spot, we have Canine Apollo, and. That was my guess. I remember seeing a lot of Apollos this year. Uh, Apollo is kind of really popular in like the Greek and Roman mythology. It means the destroyer. It's funny how Axel is the father of peace and then Apollo is the destroyer. Um, but I can see both fitting for dogs, of course. Uh, anything to say about Apollo? When I think of Apollo, the first thing I think of is Apollo Creed. Uh, so again, Coming back to, to movies again, Top Gun was super popular this year. Uh, all the Creed movies have been really popular, but they're spinoffs of the Rocky series. And growing up, Rocky was a huge movie that, uh, again, Jim loved to watch. Me and Jeff watched that movie, the, well, the whole series, I don't know how many times, countless amount of times. We know all the quotes. We love uh, Apollo Creed. We love, we love the Rocky series. So Again, I think that also uh, contributes to the name coming back in popularity. So it's very fitting that while we're talking about Apollo, the next name that we have on our list is Canine Rocky. That was a dog we saw a ton of this year as well. Uh, there was a handler who had uh, who I spoke to and met him in person. We sized their dog, and he had um, a dog named Rocky. And I asked him what his favorite Rocky movie was. He said Rocky Number Four. That's where the Russian fighter Drago um, and Rocky fight, and uh, the famous line from that, which is my favorite line: "If he dies, he, he dies." dies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that one yeah. for sure. I would agree. Number four is one of my favorites yeah. as well. What's your favorite Rocky quote? So this is uh, Rocky's the number three dog name yes. on our list. One of the quotes that I hear all the time, every Thursday I would say, 
is that when I I play in a rec league volleyball. <laughs> you guys call Rocky at your rec league? Oh no, I don't call oh! Rocky, but I know somebody who does. And uh, every time that uh, you know I go for my my rec league game on on Thursdays, it's big business. Don't uh, don't it's kid yourself. It's serious stuff. Yeah, it's serious um, for sure. I leave the house and and Jess always goes to me. Uh, hey Riley, win. <laughs> <laughs> That's like again a non-quotable quote from Adrian. Oh, not quoting, not quoting anything that most people would know at all. But I always laugh about it because I always, I always forget just slightly. Like, did I forget to clock the door? Did I forget to turn the oven off? And then you bring that quote out, and then sometimes we win and sometimes we lose. But you have to remember, it's not about how hard you can hit; it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. Rocky Six. <laughs> <laughs> Rocky Six. I don't know if that's a Rocky Six, but big time quote. Um, Lots of fun ones in there for sure. So Rocky was at, sitting at number three. The spot at number two, the dog name that we have sitting at number two, is K9 Max. And now that it's approaching the end of the year, Max is the dog's name in How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Max is also a dog name that is most popular among German Shepherds. So Max is always on the list. It's an easy name to say. I think that's what we said last year. It's an easy name to say. It gives a big punch. Uh, anything to say about Max? Yeah, Max, again, it's a popular dog name. I don't know why the reason for Max being a popular name, to be honest. But again, it, it's always on the list of top 10 dog names every single year that we've we've uh, calculated them. So I don't see that trend um Going away. Going away, Me to be honest. I think it's going to be something that, that continues to continues to happen. Me too. And I think that, I guess that brings us to dog name number one, which is a top spot this year on the top dog names of 2022. What do you think that name is? Your game was, sorry, your, your guess was Maverick. So that, that was incorrect because he was sitting yeah. at spot number eight. We have it here. So I'm going to just tell everyone that the top dog name for 2022 this year at Canine Storm. Drum roll is. Rico. Rico. Again, we had Rico last year also. And Rico is super popular this year. Why I love the name Rico is it reminds me of the Southern States, which we love visiting. And there was a dog named Rico that was absolutely paramount in our heat study research this year, which we will also post to this link. If you haven't seen it already, I highly encourage you to watch it. Uh, essentially, in that heat study, we talk about how our when dogs wear our vests that their body internal body temperature does not increase no matter where you live how, how hot it is or how cold it is so uh, there was a dog named rico from the maricopa county sheriff's office which uh, was very important in uh, corroborating our evidence that we found with our research this year uh, they did one themselves also and they had found the exact same evidence living in phoenix arizona where temperatures are like I think 100 days of the year, they're three digit temperatures. So like they're 100 something degrees for almost a third of the year. It's it's unreal. So that's why I love the name Rico because um, of course he's doing amazing work within his department, but he's also doing incredible work saving dogs indirectly by having been part of this heat study. So thank you very much for that. The heat study was without question our most in-depth podcast that we have done to date. Again, this was super fact-based We he took several months to collect the data. We had to um, actually look at the data. We had uh, Sabrina Rahman from the University of Manitoba, biosystems engineer, who was helping to, uh, to collect the data and analyze, okay, what are we actually finding? And to have the Maricopa County uh, Sheriff's Office corroborate the findings that we found with their own data that was not, had, which had absolutely nothing to do with us, I think that's probably the most powerful thing about that study is that it doesn't matter where you are, dogs cool themselves differently than humans by panting, paws at their feet, tips of their ears, and the vest does not impede any of those cooling mechanisms, which is why when they wear it, it doesn't increase their internal body temperature. To be able to smash that myth and basically put it to rest once and for all to give handlers the confidence that they can have their dog work in a canine storm vest 100% of the time without increasing the dog's internal temperature, that is huge. It does not get bigger than that for handler safety and for the dog safety, because without that information, you could be making a decision that you, you may come to regret uh, you know, very quickly. I think that was definitely our biggest accomplishment of this year. I think there was a lot of fun things that we had done, but this is something that I wanted, to know, wanted the answers to for a long time. So having done that has been very satisfying um, as a business and also as 
um, just people who are working with dogs. Like something that I wanted to mention too about that study is that we did th that study and we didn't know what the results were going to be. That was a thesis that would have been published regardless. So it's yeah. not like we could have been like, oh, the data isn't the way we like it. Don't publish the study. Like this was someone's master's thesis. Like this would have been published no matter what. So I think it was really um, scary a little bit to have done it and um, just said, let the chips fall where they may. Our neck was really on the chopping block when it came to the results. What we have been telling people has been backed in scientific evidence based on other studies, but to have our own canine storm study with canine storm vest to prove once and for all that it does not matter, that that was really everything and, and Jess is completely right. And I think when it comes to the Maricopa guys, when they did their study, they didn't believe it either. That was part of the, the thing that I found so uh, impactful for myself is that they were almost kind of trying to set out to prove that, okay, this is I know what they're saying, but this is Phoenix and, and does it make a difference? I'm kind of skeptical that it makes no difference at all. But again, their results 100% we're the same as ours and we got to be thankful for that and, and super grateful to the work that they did on their own independent study uh, as well as all the people that have believed in it before the study have come out and now are seeing the study and believing in it now it means a lot to us so thank you Kane and rico for being part of that study we're so happy and we're so happy that uh, rico is the number one dog name this year uh it's i love doing this like i mentioned uh this is one of my favorite podcasts of the year and it was really fun to do that Thank you so much for joining us today. That concludes our top 10 dog names of 2022. We're so thankful that you've, you've been a part of this and we're so thankful to have the opportunity to do this again. Like the fact that there were so many vests ordered that had so many unique names and, but still so many common names made it really fun for us to do this episode. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to everybody. We look forward to having more podcasts and more stories about the different amazing dogs that we love to help in the new year. So storm through anything. We'll talk soon. Bye for now.